solving probability problems involving arranging books randomly on a shelf. Let us recall the fundamental counting principle. If there are M ways to do one thing and N ways to do the other thing, then there are M times N ways for both. Right, now let us analyze the following problem. Four mathematics books, three history books, three science books, and two biology books are arranged randomly on a shelf, right? Now, here's the question. What is the probability that all books of the same subject land up next to each other? Number B, what is the probability that just the history books will be together? Right, so you see, we are arranging books, but our main focus would be we want to check on the probability of a certain arrangement happening. That is important. So let us now give solution to A first. What is the probability that all books of the same subject land up next to each other? So you know that we are referring to probability. So probability is a fraction between zero and one. The numerator constitute the favorable outcomes. The denominator constitute the possible outcomes. So to start with, let us find possible arrangements in the shelf. That is, we are going to call that set S, right? We have four math, three history, three science, and two biology books. So the total number of books, four plus three plus three plus two is equals to 12. So we have 12 positions to fill in the shelf, right? Now, coming up with the row and columns, columns representing the positions. Since we have 12 books, 12 positions. So position number one, we have 12 choices. That is any of the 12 books can occupy the first position. Once it's filled, the remaining 11 second position and so on and so forth up to last position where we have only one book to place, right? But then these numbers that are written are simply giving us the choices in different positions. But what do we want? We want to get the arrangements, therefore, Applying the fundamental counting principle, it will be 12 times 11 times 10 down to one, and it can be written as 12 factorial. So there are a number of possible outcomes or arrangements is 12 factorial, which is what I've demonstrated here. Although you could have applied the rules but otherwise, my main thing is once you understand everything, it will be easy for you to apply the rules. So as our first question, now that we know uh, the possible outcomes is 12 factorial, what is the probability that all books of the same subject land up next to each other? Right, so we need now to find our favorable outcomes that is some subject together. That is what we require, right? We call that set F. As an example, I'm going to fix the three history books. That is um, the three H's are representing the three history books and make possible combinations with four math. That is the four M's represent the four math books, right? Then three signs, that is the triple S's represent the three signs and two biology represented by two B's. 
subscribe. Here is the possible arrangements. When I say I'm going to fix the three history books, that means you see the edge, I'll fix them right at the beginning. Meaning if I go by this row, this is a possible arrangement. Then another row, a possible arrangement. So the rows are simply representing possible arrangement that you can okay. So that if we are to analyze row number one, here are the three books, but they are occupying three slots or three places. But then if we want to find out in how many ways can we um, position these books, we are simply saying the first position and N of the three can be there. Then the second position, once it's filled, I'm left with the two. Once it's filled, one. So together it will be three times two times one, which is three factorial. The same analysis can be done for the math. Then it will be four factorial. The same for the um, science, it will be three factorial. The same for the biology, that is two factorial. So as such, these are the possible way of arranging these um, 12 books, right? That is three factorial for the history, four factorial for math, three factorial for science, two factorial for um, the biology. And why am I multiplying? There are various ways of being arranged is because of the fundamental counting principle, right? You see now the mess I've maintained, but I've changed the biology books are now here, the signs are at the last. Again, it will be three factorial for the history books, four factorial for math, two factorial for biology, three factorial for science. But if you look at this, it is the same as this, remembering that um, multiplication is commutative. The answer we get here is the same as this because we are still multiplying the same numbers. So this can go on and on up to the last. That is, these are the numbers who will be changing positions, but the answer will still be the same. So what it means now is we have six possible arrangements, right? For history books, six Y, the first row, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. These are possible arrangements we can take this to be an arrangement or this or this or the, up to the six. This is why I'm saying we have six possible arrangements for the history books, but the same can be said for the math, science and biology, right? Because if you are now to count, check the math here, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? For the biology, the same, for the science is the same. That said, therefore, there are six times four. Why six possible arrangements for yeast, for maths, for science, and biology, right? So this six times, because we have four types of books times four. So we have 24 possible arrangements all together. That is the analysis. These are possible arrangements, right? Now, if we have 24 possible arrangements and each arrangement is going to be this, of the 24, each one it is going to be this. Together, it will then mean for the four different books, we have 24 times this, which is for each arrangement we have that, which is what I have here. So times 24 this, so we are having 41,407, the two ways of arranging the 12 books in the shelf, wherein um, same subject land up next to each other. This is all what it means, right? But remember, our main task is we want to find the probability, right? And this is the favorable outcome, right? Therefore, as you are saying, what is the probability that all books of the same subject end up next to each other? 
we have already seen the arrangements resulting in the same subject next to each other. Set F, that is the number of elements in set F is equals to 24 possible arrangements. Each arrangement is occurring in this format, right? So we got that as our number of ways for the four different books, right? So the probability of same books next to each other would mean number of favorable outcomes over number of possible outcomes. Our favorable outcome is this. Our possible outcomes is 12 factorial. This reduces to one over 1,150. But if we are to put this into decimal fraction, I've done that because remember, we are looking at a probability of some books next to each other and it's 0 0.0087. This number is nearer or next to zero than it is to one. That means the chance is very slim to come up with a situation where you, when you arrange those 12 books, right, uh, same books will be next to each other. That's the meaning and the interpretation, right? Okay, let us go now to B. What is the probability that just the history books will be together, right? So the possible outcomes, we have it already. What we want is the favorable outcomes. Just history books will be together. Let's call that set F for the favorable, right? So if I am to come up with the, these are the positions of the books 12, one up to 12, isn't it? So the history books can occupy the first three. Then we push one forward, can occupy this. Then we push one forward until to the end. So that if you are to count the rows, obviously we are having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten right? But this 10 I'm doing by counting the rows where I'm seeing different positions where the history books can be placed. We could have straight away from here, this is your first one. When you change or push position one to two, two to three, three to four, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten right without doing all this but this one will help you understand because when i say one when i then say two you see this is the situation when i say three this is the situation when i say four this situation and so on and so forth but it is nice to notice that at the end once you have this then counting in how many ways or possible arrangements you simply push one in front counting just like that Right, so there are 10 arrangements where the history books are next to each other and is done in three factorial way. Why? Here are the three um, places to place the history books. The first, n of the history books can occupy, that is the three of them. So I have three choices. Once it's filled, I'm left with two. Once it's filled, I'm left with the one. Together, it will be three times two times one, right? Which is three factorial ways, right? For each arrangement. That means arrangement number one, two, three, four, up to 10 is happening in this. So the other nine books will be arranged in nine factorial ways. That means if we consider that this is the situation that we have arranged the, the books, these are three, right? Three from 12. So we have nine slots. And how are we arranging them in nine factorial way? Because you know that these are books. There is no way you can repeat putting them where I have placed the other. So it will be nine books in nine slots. So it's nine factorial. Or you can say the position four n of the nine can occupy once it's occupied we have eight and so on up to one then using the fundamental counting principle you multiply nine times eight up to one 
which is still nine factorial. Okay. Therefore, now all what we want is the number of favorable outcomes. We have 10 possible arrangements that can occur in three factorial. Then times the nine factorial for the other nine books. And this multiplication is facilitated by the uh, fundamental counting principle. But as you can see here, this is 10. If I group it with nine, 10 times nine is the same as 10 factorial. Then it will be 10 factorial times three. So we are saying 10 factorial as a result of 10 times nine factorial is the same as 10 factorial times three factorial. So this is correct. In that now, all what it tells me is, I could have, the fact that I wanted the three books to be next to each other, I would kill these three positions, right? Once I do that, how many are left? This will be one, then two, three, up to 10. So it's like now I'm arranging in the shelves 10 books on 10 slots. Understand that I've killed the three. It's now one slot, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm now arranging the books in ten positions. So it will be ten factorial. But this, you know, how many ways will I arrange these three books, three factorial? Then you multiply by three factorial right then as such you get this answer so i'm saying you could have avoided this analysis but only um remember that there are situations where we can treat um things that are supposed to be always together as a single entity that is that killing the three you are treating this as one then two three and so on Right, so this is the situation. Okay, therefore, the probability that the history books are next to each other is the number of favorable, which is this number you have seen here, over the possible outcome, the 12 factorial, which reduces to one over 22. Again, one over 22, when you put it to decimal fraction, this number is nearer to zero than it is to one. That means that possibility of having history books next to each other is very slim, although it is there. Okay, basically, this is all what is important in terms of the approach. Putting this table, I want you to see this, but then you should remember, even some of my videos, I treated things where we considered, say, a couple as an item and kill the seats to as if now we have one seat. This is the same reasoning that you would have applied here. 